What's going on, everyone? I'm here again. I'm at the job where, let's see. See that gray central therm and that two inch PVC? See that pipe right there? Remember when they were tied in together? <laughs> I'm there. Take a look at this one. All right. So, hi Godzilla. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am here, I was here the other day, maybe last week, and the problem at the time was when the Lars Mighty Therm 2, which is 400,000 BTUs, and the Navy and NHB, I think this is a, what is this, 55, were running the... Lars Mighty Therm 2 was going out on flame loss. And I don't really work on these Larses. You know, I tell it like it is, you know. But if I understand sequence of operations and how things should work, I can fix anything. Right? A good technician will be able to do that. So, when I was here the other uh, last week, we had low pressure. Right? We verified how much pressure was going into each gas valve, and it was low. And when this thing fired up, it was choking. And I told the property agent, I'm gonna take you on a little walk, a little tour. That there's something wrong with the gas, all right? Yeah, you don't see that often. This is a fairly large house. That's for the guest house, by the way. And this meter, which is a 630,000, should be sufficient, but they also added a generator. But anyway, National Grid uh, increased the pressure on the regulator. And that solved the gas problem, pressure problem. But when I got here today, because they have no heat again on the main zone, and for whatever reason, the property manager just turns everything off. She turned this off, which is working fine. She turned this off, which whatever. And I noticed that this little switch right here, this is called your manual reset high temperature limit, right? And this thing will go off when there's too much temperature. Hence, manual reset high temperature limit. So I pushed in that little button, kind of like the block vent switch, you know, the, uh, the, the spill switch yep. on, a, on a boiler, right? Push that in while that thing fired up. I go to the side. Actually, Godzilla went to the side. We made sure our flame was good, which you could see in there, right? Make sure the flame was good. And then we fired up the Navian that does uh, in-floor rate and heating. I don't know how this works, but we have three loops and when they come back, there's, they're there, but there's no way to purge each, each loop individually. I don't know how they did it, but you also saw how they piped in the, the, the combustion fresh air into the fresh air for the mighty third button. <laughs> but as you can see, listen, I have massive, you know, piping here. Massive, this is four inch. Right? So anyway, back to the uh, the story here. I call up Lars. And, you know, normally when you talk to, uh, you know, tech support, you know, if they don't know you, they, they, they talk to you like you're dumb. And as soon as I mentioned, you know, like where should my, you know, combustion uh, analysis be? Because he was blaming dirty heat exchanger or possible bad circulator. Circulator is not, you know, circulating the water. And I said, well, it's a fairly new boiler. So, like, my heat exchanger shouldn't be, you know, suited up with carbon, but, you know, I have a combustion analyzer. Where should my CO2 be? And if my PPM of carbon monoxide is low, like it is, that means my heat exchanger is not dirty. And then, as soon as I said that, he goes, whoa, I'm actually talking to someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> and I was like, yes, you are. I'm St. Mike. I'm St. Mike, and I got my companion Godzilla. Who's better than me? Yeah. Right? Maybe Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we drill a hole because there's no test port down below. All right? You can look this up. There's no test port here to 
hook anything up. So I drilled a hole and we're testing combustion. So it's been running for about 20 minutes. You see, I have a 372 stack temperature. My O2 is good, 8.2%. Six PPM of CO, carbon monoxide, perfect. And my gross efficiency is 82%. Let's take a look at CO2. CO2 is a 7.12%. Now that originally was 6.5% and we're gonna raise that up just a little bit. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Godzilla's gonna hold up this little front panel right there. Oh, you can, actually you can do both. And there's this plate right here, right? Mm -hmm. This tube right here is bringing in fresh air from there, right? This is the inducer motor because we have a forced draft uh, combustion. And if you notice down below, behind this, this steel plate is my combustion box, my, my chamber. And there's also a pressure switch there. So if this plate is off, it, it's not gonna fire up. So we have fresh air coming in, forcing draft through the system and it vents into a chimney. However, this plate right here slides back and forth. And it was out of this a little bit. So I'm just gonna tap that in just a, a little bit, maybe a little bit too much. Bring that out a little bit right there. And then we're gonna look at the CO2 levels. By pushing it in, we'll raise up the CO2 levels by pulling it out. And we're talking about like an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. You don't need, it, you make a, a big adjustment, uh, uh, move this thing a half an inch, you're gonna be, you know, kicking yourself in, in the face. So I moved that in just a little bit and you'll see that I'm almost at 8%, which is exactly where I wanna be. So the moral of the story here is that if it's going out on high temperature, it has nothing to do with combustion at this point, all right? Now, another observation. Right? Because a good technician will always be observant to his surroundings. Right? I say that over and over again. Kind of like I tell my customers, don't pay twice, pay once. What I did notice was that this Aquastat on this indirect water heater, which is almost as big as Godzilla, almost, almost, right? Was off. Right? And we have a 400,000 BTU boiler. How many BTUs does this thing have? Let's see if we could see what it has. No pressure. No, it's not gonna tell me. That sucks. I'm not gonna tell me what the BTU requirement of that is, but obviously this requires some, you know, a, ma a massive amount of BTUs, not like 100,000 of this thing, a quarter percent of what this thing could put out, gross, by the way. Um, so I turned this back on. All right, we're gonna set that there. Uh, I have a mixing valve there. It looks like I have a recirculating line there. So we're gonna set this to 180 right there. Let's see. We are, we're getting hot. Make sure the valves are open, which they are. Let's take a look at the piping. There's our, off the right-hand side is the manifold coming out, supply and return. We have a circulator under this box right there. There's a little bit of cutoff and I'm assuming there probably should be some primary loop piping here for the uh, boiler piping, but the way it's piped in, right off of that, we have our return. Yep, return from the indirect, which is going on this side. So there's our return side. That's our far, the far piping is our supply. So we have a low water cutoff there. We have a low water cutoff there. I don't know what these guys are thinking, but if you saw the people who, in the other video, we caught them red-handed, but if you saw how, what they were doing with this, God knows what they did with this boiler, but supply piping. Now, it's inch and a quarter pipe. I have an air separator here with a take a high vent. Then the first T circulator for the indirect with the flow check going in there. This is domestic cold water going in. And then our system circulator. So pretty massive. And I have, I have two returns here though. Here's one return. That's warm. Here's another. That's also warm. And my boiler temperature. About 120? Yeah, like 130-ish. So. There you have it. How to adjust CO2 on a Lars Mighty Therm 2. And obviously you need a combustion analyzer like the Testo 320. 
Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. It's been replaced by the Tesla 300, which if you guys watched my previous videos, I think it's garbage, but it is what it is. All right, if you're a 21 percenter, thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you are not a 21 percenter, the best way you can do to support this channel, the best thing you can do to support this channel is to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to get uh, notifications when I post new video, which is almost on a daily basis, hit that alarm bell. Be well, God bless, be safe.